Have you ever made a decision and instantly regretted it? Well, now you can learn how to make decisions much better. I will bet money on it. Welcome to Talk to Communicate, and today's five minute book review is Thinking in Bets by Annie Duke, a terrific read on how basic principles of poker actually work and play out in real life decisions. I'm Steve Maida, a communication specialist, an attorney, and professional mediator for over 29 years. Life is a lot like Texas Hold'em poker. We make decisions or bets based on limited information. In fact, most of the time, our successes or failures in life will be based on two things, quality of our decision making and luck. Well, we can't do anything about luck, but we can definitely do something about our decision making. Thinking and Bets uses proven poker strategies to help us make better decisions instantly. The book has a lot of information, but today we're gonna to break it down into three mistakes and then describe some solutions identified in that book. Well, people make mistakes in their decisions because of one thing primarily, the assumptions that they have made. Mistake number one, most people judge a decision by its outcome alone. This is called resulting. Take for example, the decision to drive your car through a green light. Well, that's a good decision. But what if you got in a car accident in the intersection, which is a bad result? The outcome doesn't change the fact that driving through a green light is still a good decision. Conversely, if you decided to run a red light while driving drunk and texting, and then you don't get in an accident, you got lucky. Bad decision, but good outcome. The reality is that you should never just look at the outcome to determine whether or not you made a good decision. In business, you might have never have had a data breach which is a good outcome so far. But if you keep your server passwords as ABC123, well, that's probably always going to be a bad decision. Mistake number two. Most people consider decisions as black or white. You either right or you're either wrong. The reality is that most decisions are not 100% right nor 100% wrong. They are based on incomplete information. And as a result, there are many outcomes. In poker, there is a lot of uncertainty in every hand with at least 20 different outcomes. The same thing's true in life. There is uncertainty in every single decision you make. You need to get used to the uncertainty and not shy away from it. You need to recognize that in life, everything is part luck and part decision making. Finally, mistake number three. People often attribute luck to their failures and skill to their successes. In fact, out of 100 people involved in an auto accident, how many do you think blame the other driver for the accident. Comment below us your guess and we'll tell you the answer later on this video. What are some of these solutions? Number one, make a bet with yourself or others on a belief or decision. By simply creating a tangible consequence to being wrong, you will re-examine your assumptions and your beliefs. The higher the bet, the better the chance you will examine all of your assumptions first. Take for example, if you have to bet a million dollars on the merits of global warming, wouldn't you want to check your facts first? Solution number two, if you want to get advice about a past decision, don't tell the people the end of the story or the outcome. Stop the story in the middle and don't hint at the result. Even a small hint of the result immediately biases their decision. Ask that person what would they have done in this situation and leave them with a cliffhanger and then see what their advice is. Now, try to do this again with another person and see if they would make a different choice. Here's an example. You just bought a house in a particular neighborhood. If you wanna know whether that is a good decision, ask your friend if they would buy the same house, and if so, why? Most likely, if they know that you already bought the house, they will probably tell you that you made a great decision. If they don't know the end result, they will tell you their truthful opinion. Finally, solution number three, conduct a pre-mortem. In the decision-making process, a post-mortem is valuable in evaluating the project after it failed. You evaluate all of the causes of failure after the fact. A pre-mortem is even more valuable. And here you assume that the project already failed before you've ever engaged in it. And now you think of all the reasons for why the project would fail. Take for example, you're making a decision to make an investment in a large manufacturing company. Before you decide, assume that the company failed and you lost your entire investment. Think of all the reasons why the company would fail. Was it the marketing? Was it other business strategies? Was it the fact that the business didn't have resources? Or was it that the product was defective? 
Asking these kind of questions beforehand will vastly improve your decision-making processes. There are many other decision-making strategies in the book, Thinking in Bets. These are just a few of them today. Also, if you were wondering about what percentage of people in car accidents think it's the other driver's fault, well, you'd be surprised. The answer is 91%. In fact, even when a person is in a single vehicle accident where no other vehicle is involved, 37% of the people will not take responsibility for that single vehicle accident. If you wanna learn more about the book, Thinking and Bets by Annie Duke, look below for the link to the book. If you also don't have a lot of time and you wanna get a summary of the book in 15 minutes, you can check out the links below to read those books at Blinkist.com and GetAbstract.com. Make sure to subscribe and if you're interested in seeing more about communication strategies or other five minute book reviews, click the videos and I'll see you next time.